All right, we are back with Jason. Um, now, Jason, as a creative pre professional myself, um, I think one of the hardest lessons that I had to learn um, or relearn was how to gain confidence back because, you know, working in the marketing and advertising industry, uh, unfortunately, it can make you, you know, it can make you feel like shit. You can work Absolutely. on a project for hours, but, you know, if if your team or your client doesn't like it, you don't get paid, and then you start to question yourself. And so I think this brings into focus things like imposter syndrome in the art business, mm. where qu highly qualified and skilled artists start to doubt themselves. Um, as someone in the art and design industry, um, what's your experience with your own imposter syndrome? I feel like I'm an imposter every day. Like, I feel like I wake up and I'm like, I've been coasting. Like, a leaf in the wind like yeah. <laughs> it's like people like because it's just like i'll have like an idea for a project or like a client will approach me and you know i'll think it through and like you know go through my creative process and do all this other stuff and i'm just like thinking like yeah it's a good idea and then up until the moment where i actually have to present it i'm just like good and then that moment hits i'm like oh this is garbage what the fuck and like <laughs> that's when panic panic mode starts to set in and i see like everything wrong with it and I'm just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and like what I do, I just like, you know, it's I start from a place of this is shit. And mm -hmm. if they think it's not shit, well, then maybe I'm not as big a shit as I thought I was. <laughs> and so like everything I start, it starts off with like, no matter how great the idea is, it's shit. And I don't leave it up to me. But at the end of the day, I don't let. I'm not the one who to decide if it's shit or not. Like, I'll yeah. let, you know, I, I'm doing the work for them. So I'll let like, you know, other people's reactions determine if it's shit, because I know I'm automatically going to hate it. Yeah. Um. So like, just holding my breath and leaping like that's pushing through it. Like, that's the way that like, I've gotten this far and then we'll continue to grow. It's just like saying like, okay, I'm going to think this is shit doesn't matter. It's got to get finished. Yeah. So I'll just like, just keep pushing through and like, you know, I'll take whatever critiques come through and like, you know, make whatever changes. This is with my um, the design and work for clients, but like, I'll, <laughs> you know, just take whatever, whatever critiques come in, make those changes all good. Keep going still shit, but <laughs> they seem to like me. So like, Oh, well, and just keep trying to like, you know, pushing through and then just like, maybe it's that I'm charming. I don't know. I'll just make them laugh some more. And then like, <laughs> once they're like, hey, uh, blah, 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 and then pushing it forward until like the project is done and I'm paid for it. And I'm just like, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, fuck yeah. So every, like, I, I don't know if my imposter syndrome will ever go away. Yeah. Like, I mean, no matter how many times and this it almost kind of makes it worse when people tell you like no but your stuff is good like oh yeah, people yeah. Like, like i'm just like yeah okay i feel like you're obliged to say that though <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> because you like me and that's why <laughs> like i don't know i don't think that's real or genuine so it's still it's still there and i think i mean i don't i won't say it'll ever go away it's still there and it permeates like everything that i do almost but I don't let it get to me. Like, I don't let it hold me back. I kind of just feel like, all right, you're just another fucking obstacle I got to get through. And I just get through it. Yeah. And that's that really is the the mentality that you have to have because that imposter syndrome can really gridlock you in place where you just feel like I shouldn't even start because like who am I to do this who am I to have this client like yeah. what happens if they're paying for all this stuff but they don't think that you know my creation is um you know a value and they think that you know they need to undercut me or whatever mm -hmm. but sometimes you just have to like like you said you have to dive in and go for that plunge because there's this like anxiety wall and you and you just have to know that whatever's on the other side of it, even if it's bad or good, it's still progress in some way. And I think right. that's one of the well, that's one of the biggest things is like recognizing. And I think that's one of the things I had to recognize when dealing with my imposter imposter syndrome and and still dealing with it, which is like everything that I put out doesn't have to be like flawless, and I have to be able right. to let like one of the things that I I, I heard. Um, I think it was like this YouTube channel, the future. I was, they're they're talking about design and shit, and they're saying like, you know, when you create a piece, 
and once you release it once you finish it like it's no longer yours it's either your yeah. clients or it belongs to the public because now it's a piece of art and i think that's a, a a nice way to sort of look at it in the sense that like you know you do have to just do something and then fucking move on um, yeah <clears throat> but it, yeah it has to be let go at a, at a certain point yeah and so like per- perfection is like the biggest lie yeah like mm-hmm mm-hmm and and that's hard when like you're you're dealing you know, especially if you're starting off and, and you have editors and people who are constantly nitpicking work and then, you know, you go back to do your own work and then you're trying to be overly analytical. And so it's just like, it's, re- it's it can be really difficult. Um, yeah. From a creative professional standpoint, um, you know, there's often a choice that we have to make when building our careers. You know, we can either go through the nine to five route and, you know, join an agency or whatever, or try working for a pre-existing company. Um, or we can, you know, do the dirty work and struggle and, and, and build our own shit. Um, and I think this all speaks to a larger issue of artist independence and the ability for artists to be able to just make a living. Um, and within this conversation is the conflict between how you make your money and the authenticity and the fakery of it, you know, giving up on your passion versus doing what's practical. Um, for you, what is your take on the whole buying in versus selling out discussion? Uh, like, I don't think it's actually, I don't, you can't say that one is selling out if um, they are doing what's right for them and to, like, maintain, like, their lifestyle, that like, keep keep their people alive, basically. <clears throat> um, so, like, I mean, I'm hesitant to say that, it, like, you know, to use, like, sell out. Um, I, my, I do prefer the term buying in. There mm-hmm. are more, there are clearer examples of, like, selling out where it's just, like, you know, basically you throw somebody under the bus in order to get ahead yeah and mm-hmm. like you know or like or stomp on somebody like to like push propel yourself forward like i consider that this like biggest sellout shit but like um like i'm all for like uh buying in until like the system until the system changes because yeah. like because like i said like i like everyone i want everyone to get myself you know talking about myself, but like to <laughs> get to a point of from survival to thrival and yeah. living in this bullshit capitalist structure that we have, like it's the structure we have right now. Mm-hmm. So yes, you can hate it and you can also like work in it to succeed mm-hmm. and like, you know, and get ahead. It's like the two aren't necessarily mutually exclusive. Yeah. Like you, you, you kind of like, I mean, this is America. You, you got to do whatever you have to maneuver. Like you have to be able to like I'm hesitant, but like you have to, be able to hustle and maneuver through shit. Like, mm-hmm. and it's all about like navigating, navigating systems in order to have the best possible result. Yeah. So it, it's un, it's an unfortunate truth that we live with in this state. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially um, when it comes to artists, it's like the 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 topic of selling out and i'm and i'm like you where i'm i'm a lot more hesitant about uh accusing people of selling out especially when it comes to artists because i understand that like you know especially depending on the type of art you do like making a living doing any type of art is difficult as shit you know Mm -hmm. and so it's like when when i have when i when i'm talking to somebody who you know maybe they have a sponsorship from like walmart or you know some like shitty company or whatever it's like on one hand, it's like people can accuse them of selling out or whatever, but like there's also this notion of, like you said, like working within the system and understanding that like you have to be able to put food on the table. And so there are some things that you're going to have to do in terms of sort of buying into it so you can continue to exist to change that system. And I think that is the most important thing. I think like, be, like, like you said, like once you are able to make that change and once those systems are changing, then you can switch out from sort of buying into doing your own thing um yeah it's like because i hear like you hear about like specifically with like a lot of um like a lot of like asian and pacific islanders that have to go for acting roles specifically yeah because like i mean acting is an art too Mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. they go for like like acting roles and they're asked to put on the accent and on the one hand it's just like you want to take that stance it's like fuck you i'm not putting on an accent so i actually speak yeah like i'm from queens yeah but on the other hand it's just like but shit, rent's due, and I gotta fucking eat, and I'm tired of eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches every night. So it's yeah. just like, it's like you know, as you you kind of 
it's fucked up and you kind of like take do you take that role if you do take that role at what point do you get enough of those roles where you're just like all right fuck it i'm not doing this anymore yeah. or can you even afford to be like no nah, i'm not doing this so yeah. that's what i mean like like kind of like navigating like the like the, these systems like and being more strategic with it because like there's everything you do can be in protest but like everything you do doesn't have to be protested in one specific way mm-hmm, mm-hmm, exactly yeah i mean it's like um it's it's hard because um you know like you said trying to be able to um put food on the table and trying to um you know just be able to work it's it's difficult um when when you have a more progressive stance on things but maybe your industry is predominantly conservative. Like I'm in, you know, I'm I'm in the South and a lot of the companies here, like you go to their uh, executive page and you see it's like, oh, all old white dudes and shit. And you're yep. just like, fuck man. Like, like and, and it's really difficult, especially as an artist where it's like your politics inform your art. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, how do you hide your political beliefs and your art when your art is informing your career you know and it's just like yeah. like sometimes i feel like i have to sanitize myself and i have to sanitize like mm-hmm. the fact that and it's not not sanitize as in like i'm lying about these things but i i can't sure. be open about the fact that this is how i feel about the government or this is how i feel about gun gun culture or conservatives or whatever you know it's like like you said it's like it's sort of knowing when to be quiet and then being able to sort of strike at the right moment yeah and like i've like i mean i work in like graphic art and design which is like which is predominantly white it's still predominantly oh, yeah, white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like and it's like learning how to s- speak in caucasian that's, been, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's helped me oh out tremendously God. to the point where like i i can take a certain stance on things but then it also it's it's like innocuous enough where I won't get fired, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. also still like makes the point is just like, well, this is what I believe. Yeah. And it's, it, it's a, it's a skill that I've been hon- that honing for like years and years <laughs> of working around Caucasians and just being like, Oh, so that's how Bill says that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say what I want to say, but I'm going to use Bill's words to <laughs> say it. Like, <laughs> and so it's just like yeah. doing that type of shit. Like, Oh my God. Yeah. It, it's like you have to, and, and, and it's, it, it sounds like fucked up and I, and I, and I'm not saying that it's fake or anything like that. I think it's it, especially for people of color and especially for people who visibly look like they don't look like the executive class in their company. It's like, it really is a source of survival. You know, it's like, I've talked to other artists of color who you know like when they're in the, when they're in a boardroom meeting and you know I, i've talked to writers who are in writers rooms and the you know talk about how oh my boss like brought up this fucking racist thing like what do i say about it you know and it really is difficult because like you have to have this sort of like coded language and you have to be able to like present yourself like oh um you thought that way hmm interesting well um you know uh, i mean per, per my last email you know like you have to kind of just and, and and it sucks and i and i can't wait till we get to a corporate culture where people of color don't have to hide themselves like this right like yeah. i feel like there's so many creatives of color who really have to hide so much of their personalities because mm-hmm. either their clients don't want to know about that shit or their company doesn't want to know about that shit and so yeah. hopefully yeah. you know we become pioneers and you know things get better but um yeah given everything that you've gone through in your career and your personal life, all the ups and downs, all the heartaches and accomplishments, um, what lessons have stuck with you the longest? You, I know that you've mentioned something uh, that I found really powerful, which is this notion of being soft is hard. Uh, mm-hmm. Can you explain that? Yeah. So it's just like um, everything doesn't have to be brute forced. Like, I think a lot of times we get like so caught up in like making a statement all the time or just like, um, like just like making sure that like our point is heard Mm -hmm. that like we don't like, 
we don't take the time to say like, wait, am I, what is what I'm saying? Bullshit. Or not? <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like, you know, like taking that time, like that, that time, that soft time to actually like think about like, you know, what, is, well, what am I trying to say? What am I trying to accomplish by saying that? And also just like embracing that, like, like on a, in a, in a more like real way, it's just like a lot of shit, like, I mean, gardening, for example, like mm-hmm. gardening is typically like gendered, like, you know, female, yeah. mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. just like, sh- stop that shit, you yeah. know, like, <laughs> like embrace that. Like if you need, if you want to garden or grow flowers, flower, like, or like where, you know, just like be around pink shit or they, whatever, like, yeah, it's just like, that's the thing that I feel like a lot of times is like, um, as like male creatives specifically, like feel like they can, they have to do a certain type of work yeah. and like, sp- male, like, a uh, male creatives of color specifically like i feel i feel lump themselves and get lumped into like a specific type of work or uh, things have to look a specific way 100%. and i'm just like just like you have to like say fuck all that no like be true to yourself if you want to cry in a piece and use your tears as like <laughs> the base of the the paint or whatever it's like yeah throw yeah. your tears in it like be able to like open up and express like emotions and feelings and get and like really get in touch with like those and i feel like a lot of times like black creatives specifically as the black creative like we don't get a chance to do that like all our shit has to be about like pain or like you know like a specific a specific type of joy or like you know look a certain way and it's just like there's a wealth of like black creatives who aren't doing work like that that like you know will incorporate that there's nothing wrong with using that doing that or incorporating it but it's mm-hmm. just like there's also a wealth of black creatives who feel stifled in it because they feel like they can't express themselves like truly they have to have like this like hard front because i don't know from fucking slavery we're like you know like blacks are just like you know with the bucks and like like black women being like you know subjected to like un- unknown horrors including like rape and like tor- torture and all this other shit and it's just like we we kind of had this thing programmed into us that like we have to be hard all the time yeah you know that I'm, I'm this is the glitch happening so like we are programmed that we have to be like hard all the time mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we can't express like you know this like a certain type of like emotion or like a softer emotion it's got to be rage it's got to be anger it's got to be like this and mm-hmm. it's just like no fuck all that just like express whatever the fuck you want to express like whatever that feeling is if you have a piece of sadness or like a delicacy or like you know tenderness like just get out to express that and i feel like there's a real strength and i would say like shit like that for me it than the stuff where it's just like like whatever's cast in stone or metal it's mm-hmm. just like being able to embrace that soft side of you to like capture tenderness and like your artwork or like your expression and yeah i don't know i'm going off <laughs> no, I'm going no over like all I, over, I, off I, the rails i hold on it's like oh, my fucking headphones oh um <clears throat> no i i 100 agree because like i think in, in in sort of a different light like i know that a lot of um immigrant families you know from from the philippines or different parts of asia uh, you know they come here and, and and there's this feeling like in order to survive you have to have grit and you have to like have this mentality of like anything comes my way i have to just block it out and just boom 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 like just head to the goal like we need to improve ourselves or whatever and sometimes that kind of uh, um, tunnel vision stops you from being able to just experience some of the other more nuanced feelings that you have you know like for me like uh, for my my whole 20s like i felt like i had been you know and I, I i know you you mentioned this word is can be cringy but i was grinding in my early 20s and just trying to like work 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 but then after like you know my mid 20s hit and i started to feel like there was just so much emotion and things that I hadn't um, processed from like, you know, high school. Like I, I had a had a stepfather who passed away and, you know, I didn't really have much time to grieve and and feel anything about it. And it sort of started to resurface and it and it just taught me that like, you know, I can't just write about 
fuck white people, blah, 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 like, like, you know, anger and, and fight, 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 fight. Because like right. after a while, like any fight, if you're in a boxing match, like if you were on the offensive all the time, you're, you get tired and like your defense is down. And mm-hmm. that sort of is how I feel about art and emotion. It's like, if you're always on this one note, there's going to be that part of you that feels like it hasn't been expressed yet and and i love what you're talking about about gardening because like that that really is unfortunately like things like that like something as simple as gardening or something as simple as like mental health like a lot of men of color look at that as like being weak yeah, or, 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 or or yeah or being soft and and i just wish more people took your advice and learned that it's not about being soft it's about recognizing the fact that you are made up of so many different emotions and you're undercutting yourself and you're undervaluing yourself by only focusing on that one and only only showcasing that one side. And I think if more men, more men of color and more men of color artists um, recognize that like if if a few of us start to open up more, then we can make it easier for the rest of us to open up. Yeah, because I mean, like when you go like go to bed at night, you don't want to sleep on a slab of concrete. Like, yeah, yeah, soft, yeah. <laughs> soft things are not necessarily bad, and like I think we have to like you know disassociate this whole thing of like softness as like like weakness. Like softness is softness, mm-hmm. and it's also valuable, like just as valuable as like hardness is hard. Like, yeah, you know. Yeah, no, I hundred percent agree. Um, shit, I I loved um. Our discussion. I wish we could go ahead and talk a little bit longer, um, but before I have you, um, before we head out, I have one last question, uh, Jason. What are you working on, uh, and where can we find you? Um, so I'm still uh, grinding out uh, stage four uh, Raymond. So stage four. That's my t-shirt line. Uh, I've been working a lot on that. Um, you can visit that uh, shop stage four.com. I nice. apologize. I am terrible at marketing myself. No, no, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> so if it sounds like I'm stuttering, I apologize. Uh, so yeah, so I got my t-shirts are at shop stage four.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, we tell stories through t-shirts. Uh, we like, you know, whatever journey you're going through, we capture it in a graphic and then we make a t-shirt out of it. We sell it and we split the profits with the designer and the storyteller. Um, so I'm doing that, that project. I'm still working with clients uh, at McCoy Creative, M-C-K-O-Y Creative, spelled with a K. Um, and then my all my personal projects and my art, uh, I'm putting most of that up on Instagram. I'm still trying to work out how I I plan to like sell that. Like Corona kind of threw a fucking wrench yeah. in that shit because like I plan to be out in like you know markets and whatever. But um, that is I am the real McCoy on. Mm-hmm. I don't fuck around Facebook too much, um, mm-hmm. nor do I fuck around with Twitter. I usually am just on Instagram, just showing work and like looking at other artists. Um, so yeah, uh, you can shop stage four dot com. I am the real McC- at I am the real McCoy on Instagram and McCoyCreative dot com for my client work. Awesome. Well, we'll drop links. Um, we'll make sure that everyone goes and checks out your work. Jason it is. It was an honor. Uh, we would love, love, love to have you back on. Uh, some other time, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate this. It was awesome. Awesome, man. All right, thanks. Have a nice day. All right, you too, man. Take care.